What is going on everybody and yes today we are jumping out of standard for just a little bit we're gonna try out a little bit of a historic build that I've been kind of playing around with testing out a little bit I've been having some fun with this one uh, I'm a big Jun fan and so t truthfully I just kind of wanted to build a as close as I could to modern Jund build as I could uh, but in historic and this is kind of what I came up with now I will just go ahead and say this is very much a work in progress I don't think this is a great list as it stands however uh, it is a good starting point I think there's a couple things and we'll probably talk about those as we go through that we definitely struggle against certain matchups like elves and things like that uh, and I think there's easy solutions to that problem I just haven't quite gotten there yet I want to explore this as it stands now uh, I will kind of talk you through this deck because again I did build this uh, on my own accord I just feel like there was something to it and it's been really fun uh, so again keeping in line with modern Jund we have a lot of the hand and destruction stuff that you would expect. We've got two Thoughtseize, four Inquisition. Uh, I would consider a bit of a different split here potentially. Um, I have found that Inquisition, while very good, doesn't hit everything in Historic like I thought it might. Uh, now, again, that's just down to my lack of understanding Historic because I don't play it all that often. So pretty easy mistake to make. However, uh, Inquisition hits most things and then of course Thoughtseize will hit the rest. So that's very easy and very, very good there. Fatal Push as a two of with a single cut down as well. Uh, I find that having a little bit of a split here is usually pretty helpful. Um, I think Fatal Push works pretty well, but again, we do know things get a little above that mana value. Uh, and sometimes it's not always the, the catch-all that you would normally expect. Uh, now, speaking of catch-alls, we do have two Assassin's Trophies here in this list. This is just going to deal with anything we need to. Uh, a really nice card for just any given circumstance. And so having access to this is very, very important. Another card that we have, which is in direct uh, competition with another card in the deck, so a bit of a non-bow, is Croxa. Uh, Croxa, if you don't know, two mana, comes in as a 6-6, six, six, immediately dies. But does work really well to discard some more cards from the opponent's hand and get some damage in. And then of course, providing that 6-6 six, six beater if you can escape it later on in the game uh, that additionally will continue that discard phase. Uh, one card that this works extraordinarily well with is Deadly Dispute. So in that full control mode, if before you sacrifice this to its own effect, you can actually Deadly Dispute it, uh, which just allows you to kind of capitalize on it a little bit more. Um, this also works great with a lot of tokens and things like that, which we'll talk about in a second. And so in general, I really like having Deadly Dispute here, just an easy catch-all. Uh, Tarmogoyf is the other card, though, in the two-drop slot, and this does not work well with Croxa. <laughs> uh, generally, you're kind of on one plan or the other plan, uh, but this is just a really nice beater. It just deals a lot of damage very quickly if you can get some cards into the, into the graveyard, uh, and it does count for all graveyards, so all that hand destruction we've talked about really helps power this out even more. Uh, and the three drop slot is where things get a lot spicier. So first and foremost, we do have Fable of the Mirror Breaker, the full four, giving us some extra treasure tokens, helping us fix our mana, getting further into the deck, and then copying things like big Tarmogoyfs or Croxos later on, just to get the actual enter the battlefield trigger. Uh, just a really solid card. Season Pyromancer, obviously a really great one as well. It's not necessarily the most powerful card in the world, but it does help you smooth out those draws and do whatever you need to do. Uh, speaking of Kalagon's Command, great catch-all, discard cards, destroy an artifact, return a creature, or deal two damage to anything. Just like kind of does everything you want. It's it's a really, really solid card. Uh, and then we do have four Liliana of the Veil, again, continuing the discard and the sacrifice on creatures. And then of course, Obnixilis as well, giving us a little bit more to do there uh, in addition to the uh, Lily discard. Uh, last but not least, we do have Jaya sitting as a uh, single four mana spell in the deck kind of a card I'm testing out uh, I saw Reed Duke play Jund with Jaya uh, just testing it out in modern and it really caught my attention as a card that I do want to really try out and just see if we can make do and make happen uh, and, and so I'm really excited to try this I think Jaya is going to be quite good in this list uh, and those 1-1 one, one monks are really nice because again we can sacrifice them to a deadly dispute we can sacrifice them to an obnixilis trigger whatever we need to do uh, and get a little extra value out of it so all that to say the, uh, the lands are 
are very straightforward right now because again, this is literally like the first version of this list. Uh, so I will just again go ahead and reiterate the fact that this could use a lot more optimization, but I do think this is just a nice starting point. It smooths out the mana enough. It's not really a problem. We are based heavily in black and red uh, with more of a splash in green. Uh, and so you'll see most of the land starting on that black side and focusing there. So all in all, I think this will be a fun one. Again, definitely suffers from a few matchups, but we're going to give it a best shot. We're going to have some fun today, guys. And honestly, I'm kind of stoked to try Historic again. So let's jump right in. Let's see how it goes. All right, guys. And here we are for game number one. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think this is a pretty easy keep. Um, definitely kind of sucks that we can't play the Assassin's Trophy. However, uh, we do have a lot of really good options here, and Fatal Push starting us off is not a bad one. We'll get a good idea of what the opponent might be up to depending on their land drop for the turn, so we'll see what they do first. Looks like a Blood Crypt. Um, I think I'll actually go ahead and throw this out on our end as well. Uh, and then we'll be able to blight step pathway. This ob obviously leaves open the out of a green source as well. So if we get a green source, we can assassin's trophy. And there we go, we did it. Uh, so now the question becomes, do we want to Croxa uh, immediately and just kind of get a card out of hand or should we wait? I'm gonna go ahead and Croxa. Uh, normally I would wait, especially given we have the deadly dispute in hand here to really be able to capitalize on it. But I think it's okay if we go ahead and Pull the trigger on it. Looks like Grixis uh, control, perhaps, or you know something of that nature. Uh, again, Historic is not a strong suit of mine. I don't know a lot about Historic at all, uh, so this is very much a new experience for me. Uh, let's go ahead and Inquisition first. Let's see what they have. Interesting. All Big Daddy spells. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll throw this down, and yeah, I mean, I think we can just pass. We do have the answer for the Shark Typhoon, which is kind of nice, um, but the the sweepers are certainly going to be a problem for us, so. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, this is what I'm talking about, though, with Inquisition. It doesn't always find its targets, um, and that's just the reality of it. Like, that's fine, um, but it is a little, a little difficult sometimes, so. Uh, with that in mind, let's go ahead and season Pyromancer. I will actually discard Deadly Dispute and Fatal Push. Uh, just because I want to maximize getting a handful of these little guys out there. Uh, and then I'll throw this out and just decline so we don't have to take any extra damage. Uh, I'm very certain they'll just probably Ritual of Soot just to sweep, uh, which is perfectly fine. Yep. Um, okay. Thoughtseize is not bad. Let's lead with that. Let's go ahead and Thoughtseize first. Let's see what they have. Uh, counter target non-creature spell. That's not that big of a deal. We have the answer to the Shark Typhoon. Uh, so I think the play is just Extinction Event. Uh, let's drop this down. And I think I'm just gonna go for the Croxa play here. Um, I know, again, this isn't a good play with Tarmogoyf, but we don't have Tarmogoyf yet, so really not all that concerned. Uh, so they are gonna get rid of Negate here, that's great. Um, it just means they may not get much of an answer here. Sure. Uh, and this is phenomenal because, again, we really get to kinda, kinda steal it away here a little bit. Um, okay, so first things first, let's make sure we are attacking. We're gonna get a card out of hand here. It was a land, which I'm very happy about. Let's go ahead and kill the Assassin's Trophy. Um, we're doing this mid-combat. Technically, we don't need to do that, but that's fine. Um, and we will play you. And let's just go ahead and nom Nexilis. Uh, the question becomes, do we want to actually uh, go for the big play? Um, like, part of me really wants to, to try and finish the game quickly. Uh, you know what? This is probably a bad play, but we're gonna do it. Uh, we're gonna do the fun play. Uh, generally, I don't advise this. I will just go ahead and say. <laughs> Let's go ahead and throw this little guy out. Um, and plus up to a seven on an Obnix list. That's one of the nice things about Croxos. It does work quite well. Uh, with Obnixilis. Now they are in the camp of they kind of need to answer this Obnixilis, um, which they may just not be able to do. Sure, you can get rid of one. 
not really a huge problem. All right. Um, well, now, so we have options. We can minus seven ourselves, um, which will, of course, draw us quite a number of cards. Alternatively, we could just kind of push the damage in. Oh, or they just give up and we win anyway. All right, sick. That was awesome. Great starting game. All right, uh, let's move into game two. This month's Patreon Rewards features the amazing tutor pack with some of the most powerful tutors in Magic's history. If you'd like to learn more or sign up today, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, everybody, here we are for game number two. Um, and yeah, I will keep this. It's not a great starting hand just with the absence of like early black mana. Uh, I would love to have had that cut down available this turn, um, but I think it'll be okay. Awesome. Uh, great card. Uh, do we... Hmm. This is a bit of an interesting place to be, isn't it? Uh, I'm gonna decline and leave up the cut down. Not 100% positive what the right call is here. Part of me just kind of wanted to get Tarmogoyf down, honestly. Uh, but I think this might just be better. Oh, cut down is so good. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and get that out of there. Uh, definitely don't want them to have a Bishop of Wings. This is going to be a life gain Angels deck, which is just going to be a blast to play against. Um, <laughs> let's do this. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, would like to get the extra mana available here, so that's part of why I wanted to go ahead and get this down, because then next turn we've got a little extra mana to work with. They have a follow-up bishop. Okay, cool. Uh, fair enough. Croxa. I do really like Croxa. Um, I think we can get rid of a Tarmogoyf and a land, just to fill up the graveyard a little bit for the other Tarmogoyf. Um... Let's see, what's the option here? So we have a couple things we can do. Um, all right, so first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and crocs in now. Uh, let's just get a card out of hand here. We'll see what they actually discard. I'm a little bit curious, but uh, we'll see. Okay, just a land, that's totally fine. Um, let's attack now knowing that they could just easily block with the bishop, but that we get the uh, the token out of the deal. Wow, they did not. Fascinating. Um, I guess we decline, and then we will play a Tarmogoyf. Seems pretty good. All right, so we have a Tarmogoyf and a 2-2. We've got a Jaya in hand, a Croxa in the graveyard. So if they kill Tarmogoyf, that's fine. We've got a solution for that. Um, Jaya might also be quite helpful here. Sure, that's so scary. I gained so much life. Oh no. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is gonna be tricky, uh, unfortunately, but that's just the nature of this. Um, Okay, so. I can't do that much is the problem with Jaya. That's like the only major downside right now. Uh, the other option would be to do this and then attack. So we could discard Jaya. Um, I don't know that this is the right call. Um, Ooh, Assassin's Trophy is definitely the right call. All right, so let's uh, let's first attack with just Tarmogoyf. Uh, and I think we are going to end up leaving... Yeah, we'll leave up the Assassin's Trophy and we'll see what they do here. Ooh, what an interesting matchup. This is another one of those matchups that I just don't think is very good for us. Um... So the question now is, what do we kill? I think it's gotta be the Resplendent Angel. I really wanna kill the Bishop uh, because that's their big life gainer at the moment, if that makes sense. Um, but the Resplendent Angel just does so much. Like it's nearly impossible for us to really take that down um, given the right scenario for them. So I just feel like it's probably the, for the best that we do that. Um, Sure. 
I mean, they just gain so much life, it's ridiculous. Sure, yeah, they attack in, that's fine. Ugh, well, that's not fine. Okay, um... Let's create a copy here. Let's attack in with both of these guys. So this is eight damage. It's not a ton, but it's something... And I actually am curious how they block here. So if they kill the Tarmogoyf, like the true Tarmogoyf, that's fine. They did not. Okay, so now I don't know if I want to escape my... Uh, we would only have a 2-3 at that point. Decline. I think we trade up. Um, whoops. I don't know that this is the right call, guys, I'll be honest. Uh, but we definitely need to get cards out of hand for them. And we just have to threaten them a lot faster than what we're doing right now. So I think this is probably just the best idea. Ooh, that's a good card. Okay. Now I'm kind of wishing I had just copied the extra Croxa. Uh, from the standpoint of them, we would have at least been able to just straight discard their hand. Uh, so if you at least 15 or more. Okay, so they just win basically. Do they just immediately win? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Whatever. Um, all right. Uh, let's... What's oh, non-legendary? Whoops. Well, that's fair. Uh, we'll copy you. Just doing whatever we can do, really. Uh, okay. Man, I wish we could do so much right now and we just can't. Uh, okay, let's do this. We will... I think just get rid of a Season Pyromancer. Yeah. Um... Do that. We'll do this. See if they discard. They do. Um... So we can force the discard on the last one. I'm gonna actually do this just to get this last card out of hand. Okay, it was another bishop. I don't think that's that important then. All right, and they didn't block the Croxa. I'm very confused as to why they aren't blocking with like the angel. It seems like a really easy way to win. Okay, so now do they actually just win? I think they do, right? I think they just win. Yeah. If you have your end, so if you have at least 15 or more life than your start, each player or angel. Okay, so yeah, they just win. So this has to attack first, so that's why. Yeah, they got us. Good game. Fair enough. I'm gonna go ahead and concede. That was a that was a difficult one. Again, showcasing one of the weaknesses of the decks, which which is like the spread wide creature decks, because a lot of the the big stuff right now I think outclasses a lot of our creatures, and that's okay. I think that's just something where we could solve that with a sweeper or something along those lines. But we do have time for a game three, so let's jump into it. All right, guys, here we are for game number three, and yes, what a strong start this is. Um. Okay, I will lead. I'm actually going to lead here. Uh, I will take the action. So the reason I want to do that is to make sure that we've got, like, solid, true, good plays. Um, that we can kill. That we can kill. Yeah, okay. So we just take Ruin Crab just to remove any major immediate threats here. Uh, truthfully, Mill against us isn't the end of the world because of Croxa. Um, it's not great, don't get me wrong, but it's not the end of the world, uh, at the very least. So, that's helpful. Um, I'm gonna take the action, and I will throw out a Tarmogoyf here. Uh, just to give them something to kind of consider, and I'm curious to see what they actually go for. They could just Maddening Cacophony for eight, just to, like, get stuff going, but we have a Tarmogoyf now, so, like, Tarmogoyf against this is, like, kind of good, um but we'll see. I'm sure they will Soaring Thought Thief here. Oh, they're gonna ninjutsu out this little guy. Okay, cool. That's fine. Uh, sure. So they are tapped out right now. 
Um, do we just want to force a discard or how do we want to do this? Yeah, I'm going to force a discard and deal to you. So we'll kill this, make them discard, and then get a couple things into the graveyard for the Tarmogoyf. We're just kind of feeding on that at the moment, given they can't do anything about this, really. Um, so I think the play is basically we just need to keep pressuring them as best we can with the Tarmogoyf to not really give them very many outs. Um, they have all but one unknown card and Maddening Cacophony is not good against us. So I'm like kind of curious if they even play it. Um, they may just not. Uh, whatever, whatever, okay, that's fine. So we'll have a Fatal Push. Wow, they did play it. That's kind of crazy because now we have a giant 6-7. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fine. Oh, so good. So good. All right, six. So let's go ahead and get a card out of hand. <laughs> I don't think the opponent necessarily is playing this super well. They might still win, don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not assuming that we are just gonna win this game, but I don't know that they're playing this as as maybe cleanly as they could. Uh, let's go ahead and attack. We have one card in hand, we know what it is. They do have a Luris, but I think Luris is gonna be way too late to even make this worth it. Uh, so they do get to draw a card here, that's fine don't really care about that, uh, but they do save themselves the damage, which is relevant. Uh, definitely, definitely relevant, but I am very curious about this. <laughs> so I assume the play for them is just going to be the Soaring Thought Thief, maybe? Uh, in which case, we can try and get ahead of the game a little bit. Um, is that what we want to do? Alternatively, we can just Croxa. Uh, now I'm going to Lily. I'm going to try and start attacking on a couple different axes here. Um, I think this is probably maybe not the correct play, um, because I think we are just trying to pressure as best we can, but I feel like this is a good amount of pressure now. Okay, so they discarded a Soaring Thought Thief. Wow. Interesting. All right, let's attack. Let's see what they've got. <laughs> awesome. So before blocks... We kill that. <laughs> All right, so they take six. They're down to one card in hand and a Luris. We have a Croxa that can come down this upcoming turn. One of those cards is on land. That sucks for them. Um, not really sure. Okay, sure. Uh, really good card. Really not a good time to play it. All right, cool. <laughs> That was awesome. Uh, our deck does set up quite well against Mill, so I don't think that was too uh, unexpected by any means, but that was really, really fun. Guys, let's go ahead and wrap this one up. All right, so two out of three is not bad for a deck that, again, we are still in the early stages of. This is the first time that I've really thrown this deck together and really tried to play it in the current historic meta. I have not played in the, the current historic meta for quite some time either, and so I'm pretty happy with that overall. Certainly, certainly, there are a lot of improvements to be made. I would very much welcome anybody's suggestions. If you have any ideas of really good cards that we could include here, please share them. In my opinion, sweepers might be the biggest thing this deck is missing. I think um, because we can't make a true life modern Jund build where you're getting a lot of extra added value, uh, you still get a lot of value, but I do think you have to have that kind of big red button available in the deck uh, that normally you wouldn't necessarily have to have in like a modern version of the, the build. So uh, I think that's just the nature of the format, truthfully. And I think that's an easy fix. I think there's a handful of cards that I would be okay trimming down on to be able to throw those sweepers in. And so for me, that might be just the next step that I try and give this another shot at some time, sometime down the line. Uh, but regardless, a great fun start for Jund. I really enjoyed this one, guys. And again, two out of three, not too bad for a first round build. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Have a fantastic day, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.